Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green graveyard deck titled Plants vs Zombies, as it's all about insidious roots in this deck. A two mana enchantment saying creature tokens we control can tap to add one mana of any color. How do we get those tokens? Whenever one or more creature cards leave our graveyard, we get to make an 0-1 plant token and put a plus one plus one counter on each plant we control. This card seems innocuous at first sight, but can get out of hand very quickly, especially when we build our deck around it, with lots of creatures that can fill the graveyard, and some creatures that we can exile from our graveyard, which will enable the insidious roots as well. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting with Tyvar, Jubal and Brawler. This 3 mana Planeswalker can minus 2, milling 3 cards and returning a creature with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So with the roots in play we get to make a plant. We can plus 1 to untap up to 1 target creature. So if we have a plant in play, we can untap it with Tyvar so it can make an extra mana basically. And then Tyvar's passive is actually one of the main reasons why we're interested. We can activate abilities of creatures we control as though those creatures had haste. So now when we make a plant token with Insidious Roots, it can immediately tap for mana. And if we have some one mana effects to exile creatures from our graveyard, the plant tokens will essentially pay for themselves while pumping all the other plants we have on the battlefield. So Tyvar plus Insidious Roots is pretty nice. And then taking a look at some of our creatures at one mana, we start with the Gorehound, 1-1 one, one with Menace, saying whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters a battlefield under our control, we get to Surveil 1, and Surveil is a bit better than Milling, since we can potentially keep a Roots on top of the deck, so we can draw it instead of randomly milling it, but of course by Surveilling constantly we get to fill the graveyard and find more creatures to return to enable the Roots in the first place, and all the plant tokens from Roots can also enable the Gorehound, so that can put a ton of cards in the graveyard over time. Then there's the Maverick. When it enters, we get to Surveil 2, so we get some immediate value. And we can also exile it from our graveyard for just a single green mana to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature we control. Although just the fact that we're exiling Maverick from the graveyard is what we're interested in, since that will enable the roots making a plant and giving us more plus one counters. Then there's also Icar Drinker, a 1-1 with a lifelink. Can exile it from the graveyard for just a single black to incubate two. The incubator token's nice, but again, we're mostly just interested in cheating cheaply exiling a creature from our graveyard. And then there's the Dream Thief, a 1-1 one, one flyer, it lets us surveil one when it enters, and for two and a black we can exile it from a graveyard to draw a card at the cost of one life. So this one's a bit more expensive, but it does provide card advantage while still letting us surveil. And as a 1-1 one, one flyer, it can also maybe chum block a large flyer from the opponent so we can survive an extra turn and maybe win on the way back with our plant tokens, since our deck can be pretty weak against opposing flyers. And then at 2 mana we continue with the Harvester, has Unearth, so if we unearth it from the graveyard that also enables the roots, and when the Harvester attacks we get to exile target card from a graveyard, so if we exile a creature card we can enable the roots once again, so that's 2 mana for 2 roots triggers potentially, and then ideally we're exiling some cards that don't exile themselves, so we're mostly looking to exile Gorehound, or maybe Analyst and Butler, which also don't exile themselves from our graveyard. The Butler will mill 3 when it enters, same as the Analyst, and then when the Butler dies we may exile it, meaning it first goes to the graveyard and then gets exiled. That's already one Roots trigger. When we do, we get to return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand, so that's a separate instance and a separate Roots trigger, so Butler can enable the Roots twice. And then there's the Analyst, mills 3 when it enters on a 1-3, and for 4 mana we can sacrifice it, returning all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, so that can also give us a bit of a mana boost, make it easier to exile Dream Thief from the graveyard, and cast some of our other more expensive spells. Now the Analyst is not a must-have in this deck, if you were playing blue as an extra splash you could easily replace it with the Archaeologist, which is another way of milling while also maybe finding the roots in the first place. Of course adding an extra color does have an additional cost of having to play more tap lands or pain lands, so it doesn't come for free. You could also try the Blanchwood Prowler, which finds a land when it enters, although it's a little bit smaller to start out. So there's a lot of options in the two mana slot, but so far I've been relatively happy with the Analyst. And then of course we've got our four roots for Tyvar, and then in case we don't naturally draw the roots or surveil into it, we can also use a Diabolic Intent to tutor it up, just need to sack a creature as an additional cost, and since we have so many one drops that we typically don't mind going to the graveyard, then a Diabolic Intent also makes a lot of sense, and if we already have the roots, maybe go for Tyvar instead to set up our combo. 
And then we also have two copies of Urborg Repossession, since of course we could randomly mill Insidious Roots with Butler, Analyst, or Tyvar. So then having Repossession to kick for three mana total, we can both get a creature back as well as a permanent, which could be Roots, could be Tyvar, or a second creature. And if we already have Roots in play, then Repossession can also be a way of triggering it multiple times, while also gaining a little bit of life, which can come in handy. So yeah, that's my current take on the Insidious Roots deck. Now there's a few other ways you can approach it, by splashing blue as we mentioned, you gain access to the Archaeologist, and you can also potentially play the Sky Turtle with multiple copies of Insidious Roots and Tyvar, and looping multiple turtles by using the green ability, you can potentially make infinite plant tokens. Instead of splashing blue, we could splash white for Bartolome as a sacrifice outlet, and then if we have the skeleton that can return from our graveyard for one and a black, we can keep looping it if we have two roots and a Tyvar, and then we can also go infinite. So there's a few ways we can make infinite plant tokens, but for now I'm keeping it simple and just go black green and even though we don't make infinite plant tokens we can usually make enough in one turn to still present lethal on the following turn. And then mana base, I'm keeping things also pretty streamlined, no tap lands outside of Death Camp Glade if we played early, and then just land or waste, basics, and then the channel lands for added interaction. Now we could also play the new surveil land, which enters tapped but can maybe fill the graveyard for us. We could also play with the creature land that can also exile things from the graveyard if it attacks, so it does have a bit of synergy in our deck, but I've just found that it's better to keep the curve low, make sure our lands are untapped, and we don't have to deal with any sluggishness. And then just for completeness sake, I've also tried Willow Geist in this deck and wasn't too impressed. Deathbonnet Sprout could be good at filling the graveyard, but the random mill in our upkeep can actually be a drawback if you surveil something useful to the top of the deck, so I ended up cutting that one as well. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. We've got our Insidious Roots and Tyvar. So just need to make sure we can keep time for alive and then we'll be able to tap our plant for mana right away. So we'll start with the Gorehound. A good setup piece once we get our roots going, but it is going to get cut down for now. Can maybe get it back with Tyvar later. Our opponent black white with a farm hand. So shaping up to be a more controlling deck can Certainly expect some sweepers. Hopefully they don't have enchantment removal. And now with a backup Tyvar. It doesn't matter if they take one away with a bat. Flying creatures also kind of annoying since we don't have much flying or reach ourselves. Opponent takes Tyvar. So if I minus two, they can finish off Tyvar with a bat. Or we can play Dream Thief first, which I don't mind. Plus maybe a Harvester. Sure. Seems fine. And another Roots we can keep. If the bat attacks, it kind of implies Wandering Emperor. Can take the one from Farmhand. Okay, can play another Roots. And then wait on Tyvar until we're ready. Although now I could attack with Harvester, exiling the Gorehound, just to be able to trigger Roots for the first time. Might be worth it. Even though I don't necessarily have a creature to get back with Tyvar now. So we get our first pair of planes and we could see Emperor exiling Harvester. That's fine. They wouldn't be able to unearth it either. But now we've got some initial planes that can make mana and uh, that can maybe pressure the Emperor as well. Virtue of Loyalty for 5, that's acceptable. And our opponent's just gonna cash in their Planeswalker. Should be able to overpower Virtue pretty easily. 
It's just a flyer that's a bit of a concern, although we found another route. So we can play it and then still play Tyvar. And then just hope to mill a creature, basically. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Could also play Maverick first. Higher chance of milling a creature so Tyvar can get one back. That's maybe a little safer. Alright, found two of them that both trigger roots as well, so that's perfect. So we'll play Tyvar. I guess I could save myself one damage. So I can start by using the Icker Drinker, making two plants, then play Roots, and then we can keep going. Since the plants can tap for mana right away, Tyvar can also untap one of the plants to make one more mana. But this seems like a good starting point. Find Butler. And we're off to the races. Okay. And our opponent concedes, yeah, the triple roots is just too much for them to overpower. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got what looks like a keepable, if maybe unexciting hand. A lot of the creatures we want in our graveyard, but at least we've got one copy of roots. And there's a second one, that's much better. Drinker in the graveyard to enable them. So now we're just hoping to find Tyvar and some more lands. Hang back with the Maverick. Wanna chump while we can before Etching of Kumano shows up to exile it. Okay, a land is good. So we can play the roots. And then for now... Could already get back Drinker to make two planes. And then next turn we can uh, get back Maverick. Maybe mill some more with a Dream Thief. While our plants are small, they are still pretty vulnerable to burn spells, so I don't want to put them in harm's way if I can avoid it. This attack implies maybe a monstrous rage, so I think I'll take it, and then next turn we can grow our plants quite a bit more. It's going to be an antagonize instead, okay. So we're down to seven. And a maverick is probably better than a dream thief at this point. Even though we're somewhat limited in how much green mana we have. I'll still start here. And then land seems good to keep. Analyst is maybe a little slow. Could also repossession the analyst to get it back and then still trigger the roots. And then I don't want to mill the lane, so I don't want to play Analyst yet, necessarily. But we can um, get back Maverick and play Icker Drinker. Okay. And now we've got Ample Blockers. Could maybe even consider an attack. Godric can fly over, so that's definitely a concern. And a monstrous rage, so that hits us for 7 down to 1. 
next turn Dream Thief can jump. But of course it's still Train Pulse. So yeah, we kind of have to go off here. Okay, another Maverick helps. So what if we were to attack with everyone here? 12, 13, plus 3, 16. We go back up to 4. Yeah, I guess we'll give it a try. If our opponent can enable celebration next turn, we're maybe still dead. So I kind of regret not attacking for 6 last turn. We may have broken our opponents that are maybe not used to doing all the math. Well, if our opponent takes it, they're certainly dead. Not gonna complain. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, just missing green mana, and then we're off to the races. There we go. So start with a Gorehound. And we'll wait and see if an opportunity presents itself to resolve Insidious Roots. If not, maybe start with Analysts. Opponent's gonna march our one drop, that's fine. They could have also marched our enchantments, so don't feel too bad about it. But it does mean our opponent's more likely to be on blue-white control, which is going to be a tough matchup, the combination of sweepers and enchantment removal. So, and what's next? Maybe Maverick double Dream Thief and hit for one. Could keep a land on top, but we'll likely find more that are less painful. So yeah, if our opponent's playing with temporary lockdown, that card also kind of ruins us. Tyvar I could keep. So the question is if I even want to commit a Dream Thief, but it seems fine. At least applies a bit of pressure, maybe forces a uh, first sweeper. Opponent has a lockdown, that's uh, pretty bad, but at least we didn't have our roots in play yet. So we'll start with Tyvar. Could have waited a turn to minus, since now I don't get any plants. But uh, get Gorehound back versus Harvester. If Harvester attacks, it enables the roots as well. And applies a bit more pressure. Alright, opponent can finish off Tyvar, I guess, with uh, Anchorage. But now the coast is clear for roots. And then let's see what we can exile. A Gorehound. Don't really want to exile with a Maverick. Although I also don't really care about getting one counter, so I may as well get the plants now and kind of force the issue. And I hope they don't have another board wipe. Faithful Mending. Opponent has to go digging. Is it possible they had some fall in hand, but no fifth land yet? And get lost hits our roots. So we can attack for eight, nine damage. Opponent wipes the board next turn. And yeah, then we're gonna be in a bit of trouble. So I guess we'll go exploring. Two 
to play Maverick or not to play Maverick. I guess I'll try and improve my draw step for next turn. Okay, maybe still mill something useful. Analyst and Gorehound. Gorehound's not going to be very good without any creatures to enable it. Analyst can get a bunch of lands back, but I don't have a use for those lands. This is where having a creature land could come in handy, but then again our opponent also has a field of rune. So yeah, I'm not sure what to do with an analyst. I guess uh, having a lot of mana is nice. So we can maybe chain together dream thieves to draw. Can maybe mill some as well. Should have played basic so they don't have a target for field of rune. But also don't really see them activating it. Opponent had a march for two. On Harvester. Okay. So they are down to one card in hand at least. And it doesn't appear to be a sweeper. Possible they have another lockdown they can cast. Alrighty, so if I cast Analysts could still mill something before attacking, like another Maverick for an extra counter. So we may as well. And Dream Thief could draw. So yeah, we'll just keep up our mana to either sack Analyst or use Dream Thief. Bone falls to one. And we'll see what happens. Another Field of Ruin. And sure, end of turn, use Analyst. Repossessions, excellent. Can get back Tyvar or Insidious Roots alongside a creature. Should probably start by attacking. Even if her opponent has Mending, cast Flashback. Doesn't gain enough life. So we'll keep it simple. Exile gain two, still not enough. And our opponent explodes, awesome. So yeah, temporary lockdown is very effective against our deck, but they might have used it prematurely. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got our roots plus our uh, diabolic intent to either find another copy or maybe Tyvar. So we just need to surveil into a green source, which shouldn't be too difficult. Opponent on a vampire deck, all right. Could also play Gorehound first, although there is a chance I want a Diabolic Intent next turn already. And then Repossession, probably not needed. I guess we could also Intent for a Forest, but that's not particularly exciting. Okay, so... Could just play Butler now, and then postpone our decision. Opponent with a reinforcement, so I guess it is just red-white tokens after all. And a war leader's call to pump the team so they get past a butler. The good news at least is that our opponent only has ground creatures, which we can chump with our plant tokens eventually. And we found our green source. So this turn we can play Roots and uh, Gorehounds. Still won't be able to intent for Tyvar next turn since we'll be a bit short. So I could also go a Gorehound into Analyst instead. Although if I play the Roots and jump with Butler, we already enable the Roots, so then we actually make a bit more mana. So sure. We'll give that a try. And then by making a plant, we trigger Gorehound. No reinforcements. To maybe set up a Convoke. Yep. Alright, 
this is gonna hurt. Full Convoke means we don't get to jump with a butler and make a plant. And our opponent can maybe just go all out for lethal next turn. And now there's also the Warden as a huge flyer, so we'll need Dream Thief to jump it. So it's not looking good. Found a forest. Yeah, I guess we analyst hope to mill some cards we can get back from the graveyard. Doesn't tend to do anything for me. Yeah, problem is the plant will still have summoning sickness if I sack Butler, even though it does make two plants. Since we have a, a Gorehound, we can return as well. But I guess we start with uh, Intent. Could attack for one first, I suppose. And then what can we possibly get that saves us? I guess repossession triggers roots and gains two. Maybe that's still our best uh, card here. And then I can play Gorehound as well. Can go for Butler. Keep Roots on top. But uh, yeah, I'm still not uh, loving my position. Another Convoke Knight Errands, alright, so... Maybe they're not going for lethal this turn. Although with only three plants able to attack, we're also not going to present 18 damage on the way back. Unless they somehow tap out for another Convoke, which seems unlikely. Warden attacks on the ground. And so does Knight Errant. Opponent still has one mana untapped. They may or may not be able to play another creature, but they still have three blockers on the ground. So yeah, the plants won't be able to win the game next turn. So I guess we could try to trade for the Warden so we don't have to worry about a flying creature. And then jump with... Maybe a Gorehound, keep an extra plant alive. So that can make an extra mana for us. So we get to play the roots. If I unearth Harvester, that counts for two roots triggers, assuming I exile a Gorehound from my graveyard as well when we attack. So we'll go with the Roots and Harvester. Maverick's a good one to mill. Dream Thief, good to mill. And found another Maverick. And Tyvar we can keep on top. Harvester attacks to make two more planes.
Okay, so how many blockers do we have? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's gonna be close here whether or not we survive. Evangelist at least doesn't deal more than two damage. Opponent discarding a recruiter. And we get to untap. Well, we can certainly do some damage this turn. Start with Tyvar, so our plans all have haste. And get back analysts. Keep all those going. Okay. Want to keep an eye on my library size so we don't end up decking. I guess it's not a bad time to play Butler here. Should be making sure I mill before I surveil, but uh. Also don't want to time out. Keep putting counters on my flyer. And then we probably go to attackers. And then every creature that's lethal can force a chump. The 17 powered one I could grow, but only if I have three plants untapped, which I guess we do. Uh, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can get back double dream thief here. So all of these are lethal and require a chump block. So let's go for it. Make sure I didn't miss anyone. And we'll see how our opponent blocks. Yeah, I guess our 15 power token also could have attacked since with double roots and double dream thief we'll uh, get four counters on a total. Okay, so we don't have any creature going through, it seems. So they're all getting chumped. Alright. Just gotta avoid getting burnt out by the War Leader's Call, basically. We've got a flyer for the Bat Token. So I don't think there's anything else I can do. We can potentially sacrifice analysts to get a bunch of lands back. But it comes down whether or not they can put four creatures in play here. Knight Errant goes digging. Okay, so if that finds a couple token makers, we're dead. And that's gonna be one short, as far as we know. Although now with the land we're dead, since they can cast Inspector and 
Evangelists, and that's gonna be three damage from the War Leader's Call. Yeah, that's a shame. If we had a lifelinker in play, I could have tried to grow it, put some counters on it, and survive. But uh, that wasn't the case. GG's. Can put a ton of lands in play. And still die. Close one here against Boros Tokens. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, while we don't have the best early creatures, we have double roots, so I can't turn it down. And Butler's a bit better, although we could also play a Harvester in case we end up with creatures in the graveyard to exile and enable roots. So for now, attack for one. And I guess we may as well play the Butler first. Only drawback is if it dies, I don't get to enable roots. Whereas if we played roots first, at least it provides a bit of value. Bono does nothing. And a virus beetle to make me discard actually helps me in a way. I think drinker over harvester still, as it's a bit cheaper to enable roots with drinker. Alright, I think... Uh, Probably time to get our roots on the battlefield. And uh, Drinker can attack and offer the trade. I guess we could attack with both. Mono Black isn't known for having enchantment removal, but it's not impossible. And then the main concern is large flying creatures. Like, maybe an Archfiend can be pretty good against us. For now, probably go for a Gorehound and another Roots. And then next turn we get the party started. Gorehound down. That's fine. And a shield root makes me sag butler, which enables double roots. So, pretty happy about that. And what card to return? Probably either Analyst or Gorehound. Okay, and now we've got a lot more mana to work with. Now, are there sweepers to worry about? There's a new 5 mana sweeper, as well as a Gixxus command. So the new sweeper doesn't matter how large my creatures get. Gixxus command we can pretty easily beat by growing our plants, and yeah, her opponent scoops it up. So just by getting back some of the cards that are already in the graveyard, we can pretty close to present lethal with her opponent at 14. Yeah, double drinker would be four more counters on each plant, so yeah, that's gonna be good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we're missing roots. We get to surveil with Dream Thief and Maverick to try and find it. Yeah, I think this is still good enough to keep. So we can start with Dream Thief, turn two Butler, turn three Analysts, or we can get a tap land out of the way first. Yeah, let's just start there. Analyst on two, and then Butler plus Maverick on three. Facing soldiers. There's the Roots. Probably want to play it before Thalia shows up. Even though Analyst is a good blocker for the officer. Opponent passes. Possible they're holding reinforcements. Small chance they have a get lost for the roots, which would be unfortunate. But uh, plan is analyst plus one drop. And we mill the roots, so repossession would also be a good draw now. 
another dream thief can go. Madeline's pretty good too. Although they don't have a good attack. Okay, so if Harvester comes back and makes two plans, so they'll have to exile the Dream Thief, so that doesn't feel great. Wanna maybe mill with Butler first. And then Butler's happy to jump. Still no other creature I really want to exile with the Harvester. So I think just double one drop for now, Maverick first. Play Drinker. And I'll just play defense for now. Got a few lands in the graveyard, so sacrificing the Analyst could also be a good play. We'll undo Thalia stacks quite nicely. And our opponent convokes. Alright, as long as I don't make some huge flying creature, we should be alright. Can hold off the ground pretty easily. So... Yeah, this turn I could just sacrifice Analyst, get... Four lands back. And then next turn we can start drawing with a Dream Thief. And take it from there. Opponent might exile the butler here with the uh, Brutal Cathar. Since that provides two Insidious Roots triggers if it dies. Falsification. Okay, might go after butler as well. Our opponent finally starts attacking. So this can soak up the attack and then I think we're happy to put these in the graveyard. Okay, so we can make a bunch of plants here. But I'll start by drawing with a Dream Thief, in case we find another Roots. Butler's not bad, although we know about Brutal Cathar. Okay, maybe tempt the opponents into... Exiling the Dream Thief instead. And Harvester could also go for an attack here to get two more plant triggers. Or we could keep the Incubator available. I guess I'll go for Harvester. And Dream Thief might want to attack as well now. Exile Analyst. Okay, so we've got some large plants. We'll see what our opponent does. Cathar exiles our plant token. So now we can maybe jump with our butler. And then first strike damage happens, butler triggers the roots twice, so this will actually be large enough to block successfully, assuming no shenanigans. Something along these lines. Looks like they might have an Iganjo, which could mess up or play a little bit. Alright, that's fine. Get back. Probably the Icker Drinker. Still a pretty nice ambush. 
See if we can mill anything more. Another drinker. Go for Harvester. Don't think there's any creatures we can exile anymore. But it might be time to turn the team sideways. All right, so we got to see the Plants vs. Zombies deck in action. And Insidious Roots is quite the card. Requires a little bit of setup to get it going, but uh, yeah, once we get it on the battlefield, it's usually not going to take us too long to take over the board. And that's before we get a second copy in play and combine it with Tyvar. So I'm quite impressed by what the deck is capable of. That doesn't mean that the deck is unbeatable. There's cards in Standard that can deal with the deck almost single-handedly, thinking of Temporary Lockdown, which exiles all our creatures as well as the Insidious Roots, then Graveyard Hate can be kind of annoying to fight through at times, and then if you think of one of the more popular best of three decks, the Four Color Domain deck, that's going to be a pretty tough matchup since they have the combination of sweepers to handle our first wave of plans, Leyline Binding answers the Insidious Roots, and then Atraxa, a big life-linking flyer that can ignore the plant tokens on the ground, is also going to be difficult to outrace. So I don't expect the deck to necessarily take over standard, but there's still a lot of ways to potentially build the deck, so it's possible it will improve over time. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!